Today is the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day, November 11th, when the Allied powers of World War I signed a ceasefire agreement with Germany. Across Europe, bells rung out today in unison to mark this occasion. There was a people's procession where 10,000 people in London marched along with British service people, followed by a service at Westminster Abbey. And all of this to celebrate the peace that now exists between former enemies. They say that after the war had ended, the first flower that grew on the British battlefields was the poppy, a red flower that now represents peace and rebirth. And it's often used to represent the lives of those who were lost in World War I, who gave their lives hoping to stop war from ever happening again. Here in the US, we celebrate Veterans Day when we honor those who have served in the armed services. In a recent New York Times article, author Rory Fanning asks, what's the difference between celebrating Armistice Day and celebrating Veterans Day? To Fanning, who's a veteran, it's the difference between venerating the war machine and honoring our service people. Do we choose to celebrate war or do we choose to honor the peace that comes from sacrifice? Fanning wrote the book Worth Fighting For, a memoir of his transition from army ranger to conscientious objector. And he says he's declared his own personal armistice. In my house, above our fireplace, we have an image from November 11th, 1989, the day the Berlin Wall came down. In this image, you can see East German border guards through a gap in the wall. Free Berliners literally used crowbars and chisels to bring down the Iron Curtain and end the Cold War. My husband is British, and this image is one of the defining moments of his youth. It felt as though peace and freedom was inevitable. We know now that this is only half the story and that really the only thing that was inevitable was that the people must continue to fight fascism and continue to tear down walls and end wars and continue to work for peace. The Berlin Wall fell without a shot being fired. And the story is that night, East Berliners and West Berliners broke through all the barriers and spilled into one another's section of town and they celebrated and danced and sang together all night long. For me, November 11th is the day I got sober. So you could say I too celebrate my own personal armistice on this day. And on this day every year, I celebrate the peace that is hard won. The peace that comes from consistently loving myself and the world day after day. Even when it's difficult, even when the world gives me a million reasons to give up on it. I wake up and decide to care again, to resist war of all kinds, to resist hatred and bigotry and racism, and to love again. It's difficult to celebrate peace these days, to celebrate armistice, when war is everywhere, all the time, and there is seemingly no beginning or end to it. It just goes on and on. And most of the time, you only need to barely scratch the surface to find that the U.S. government is somehow involved. That global war on terror launched after September 11th in 2001 continues to this day. And what it means to be a service person has changed. Rory Fanning writes in his book that our policies have created our enemies. And somehow the job of a service person has changed from ending war to perpetuating it. So today, let us take our cue both from Armistice Day in Europe as well as Rory Fanning. Let the bells ring out for peace and let that sound reverberate in our hearts, reminding us of a time when all our troops came home. And let us declare our own personal armistice today, where we commit to fight for justice by loving more, loving our neighbors and ourselves, and leaning into love like our lives depend on it, because I'm telling you, I think they do. Like those in Berlin in 1989, let us fight fascism with insistent celebration and love and envision a world where we can bring down all these walls without a shot being fired. <laughs>